and instrumental in the whole process of Africa's economic development. How true. A second thought, healthcare and social services. According to a World Health Organization report, you may want to listen to this, about 60% of healthcare delivery in Africa is orchestrated by the church and or faith-based platforms. This is substantial in the backdrop of the fact that public health provision is hampered by weak governance, management flaws, and limited financing. In general, African governments allocate arguably less than 10% of their budgets to health care, and as such, the health sector is characterized by a short supply of health workers, depleted and dysfunctional health systems, limited availability of essential drugs, and poor health infrastructures. I come from the northern part of Nigeria, and I can tell you that these are not just um, theoretical statements. Um, it's unfortunate when you get to some of these areas in Nigeria for a case study. I've traveled quite extensively across the African continent, and I've been met with very, um, very disappointing expressions of pain and you know, health issues, even across many supposedly cosmopolitan cities. Healthcare in Africa still remains a very serious issue, even among the organized African societies. In this difficult and challenging setting, church health services have dominated the provision of health care across the continent. Apart from missionary health facilities, the church has continued to play an invaluable role in offering preventive and curative medical services, particularly the local communities. The church has made significant contributions towards the primary health care program, such as provision of basic packages of health services to rural and underserved communities, assisting communities to develop and implement locally relevant and sustainable health programs, and ensuring access to health services for the most vulnerable and marginalized groups. The church health services have put more emphasis uh, on the most rural and isolated communities where no other health care provider exists. In remote and poor localities which do not have roads or good road networks and where people have to walk sometimes, and you believe this, for more than a day to reach the nearest hospital available, the church has maintained services that would easily have been abandoned by the state. This has not only served to bridge the gap in healthcare delivery, but also demonstrated the church's strong presence in uplifting the standard of such communities. The third area of focus in examining Africa's role is the area of economic empowerment, and particularly I'm looking at entrepreneurship, job creation, and social aid. The church has increasingly engaged in Africa's economic and social development by providing various supports and value-adding economic empowerment services for the well-being of the African people. For example, the church has been involved in giving both spiritual support and material contribution to the poor, the needy, and the less privileged within their churches and communities. I can tell you that myself and our organization have been actively involved in this wise. We've launched various programs. There currently is an agricultural empowerment program, and we've spent millions and millions of Naira just putting together um, professionals along that line to help train and empower people. This came as a response to the harsh economic reality that is plaguing Africa, and that includes Nigeria, even though the largest nation within the African continent. The church has been actively involved 
in collaborating with private organizations and governmental institutions to help create jobs, give professional career trainings and workshops, set up entrepreneurship and business programs to as many individuals and local communities at large. Many churches have been at the back of the rise of many startups and SMEs with a view to promoting economic empowerment within their regions and extending the same across the entire continent. Our fourth area of consideration, peace and religious tolerance. Hmm. I took a deep breath because this <laughs> is quite an interesting one. Religion has been a force of both good and ill in the stability of the African countries. This is the fact. In several destabilizing conflicts, conventional or low level, faith and religion have served as important undertones and sometimes as the outright basis for conflict and wars. Examples of these factors um, or examples of these kinds of incidences uh, are for a case study, the Boko Haram insurgency in northern Nigeria. This has largely been driven by extremist views. And then you may want to consider the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda that was formed in 1987 by Joseph Kony with the aim of overthrowing the Ugandan government of Yoweri Museveni and establishing a Christian theocratic state. In several other conflicts, religion has been an undertone, even if not a formal basis of conflict. In Nigeria, again, for instance, the conflict between the Fulani headsmen, many of you have heard this or probably followed the trend um, through the lens of media. The conflict between the Fulani headsmen and the farmers in the Middle Belt regions are often understood as fueled by land scarcity, grazing rights, and climatic change. But the truth is that they have a very strong religious undertone. The herdsmen are usually men of extremist views and practices, and the farmland communities they displace as part of the land grabbing program sometimes and most times are usually occupied or belong to Christian communities. This has been proven without any sense of prejudices, biases, or sentiments. In many regards, the law enforcement agencies on apprehending many of these um, this extremist herdsmen, most of them have been found to be people who sustain extremist views and their victims have usually been people of uh, the Christian faith. But religion has also been a force for peace and peace building in Africa, contributing to possibilities for development. In Mozambique, for a case study, which experienced a 16-year civil war between Renamo and the Frelimo forces that left one million people dead and ended in 1992, Mozambique's churches played a decisive mediation role that ended the war. Interfaith religious groups have also played strong roles in peace building, in civil conflicts, in nations like Cote d'Ivoire and the Central African Republic. The church and many other religious bodies have played significant roles in the release and the freedom of many victims of kidnap and abductions as we have in many parts of Nigeria, including um, you know, the Middle Belt and so on and so forth. In fact, extending to all the African nations. I remember one time I returned from a meeting and I was met with a very serious distress call. And on responding, I was told that um, the abductors had taken some people that were affiliated to me. It was a group of people who had returned from a program and all of them were abducted and they were given 24 hours to present 50 million naira, else every one of them would be slaughtered. 
and because they were closely related to me we mobilized you know to inform the law enforcement agents but uh, clearly there seemed to be only so much they could do and sadly we had to get people even of other faiths to be able to talk perhaps with the um, abductors mm -hmm. if they could show kindness and mercy and you would not believe the cruelty that came cruel statements from those conversations sadly one was shot on the foot usually those levels of mayhem are unleashed mm -hmm. to get you to see that they are serious to cut the long story short we ended up spending up to 20 million naira uh, even in the presence of law enforcement agents thankfully they were all released and we had the opportunity mm -hmm. you see the challenge is when these people are released they still are not fine the trauma that they have to go through some of them go through rape some of them go through all kinds of traumatizing things and it's one thing to get them free then begin a process of constructive rehabilitation because some of them even without the activity of terrorists again they may end up dying the trauma becomes too much you see and so uh, I'm not just saying this as a lecture these are realities that some of us have been forced to live with especially when you become a leader within these regions you cannot shy away from being part of the process that leads to some of these things and so i'm just using that to point that the church has played very significant roles on this wise furthermore the church has played significant roles in resolving ethnic and religious clashes in many parts of africa and in fact have become partners with government and law enforcement agents in the promotion of peace, tolerance, and mutual respect. Religious bodies have actively organized peace concerts. Our organization has done that too as a case study. And so uh, my work started largely in Zaria for those of you who are familiar with Nigeria. And um, for many years, we experienced all kinds of religious crises. And so we came up with an initiative to hold periodic peace concerts. And the intent is not to advocate fanatism. I'll be talking a bit about that before I conclude my discourse. And we successfully brought people from all religions, taking away all kinds of prejudices and promoting love. And you wouldn't believe how productive these concerts were. People came. Um, we had all kinds of welfare activities and people, Christians, Muslims, and any other person in between, they came. And it was very productive. I can tell you today that I have very good friends that cut across the religious divides. Very productive discussions. We may not agree on the core matters of faith, but I do not think it's been enough reason to hate, to fight, and so on and so forth. Are we together? Okay, so... Um, religious bodies have actively organized peace concerts, interfaith forums, sport activities, and public discussions in many parts of Nigeria and sub-Saharan Africa with a view to bridging the gap of intolerance and promoting peace and mutual respect. Challenges and Criticisms like every and any other system led and managed by humans, there will always be limitations, compromises, excesses, and ill practices. Faith, spirituality, and religion has had its share of the aforementioned challenges. This has led to criticisms from various quarters and strong reservations as to the overall relevance and practice of faith in our contemporary society today. There is still a lot of growth and improvement, truly, that needs to be brought to the current context of faith and spirituality, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. Matters of neocolonialism by the religious and political elites, advocacy of laziness and irresponsibility through wrong and extremist teachings, lack of transparency and accountability in leadership even christian leadership moral failures within faith-based systems are all issues that whether now 
or in the future i presume will have to be confronted if the relevance of faith in nation building and social and economic development is to be preserved wow 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 what an insightful video we just went i believe like i said earlier that you are going to learn a thing or two so let me know in the comment section what are the things you learned do you have questions maybe perhaps i may be able to provide some answers to them and maybe people can also help you provide some answers to them in the comment section so if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please do because i'm going to be uploading lots of videos for your edification so subscribe to this channel